Hello again and welcome to Money Matters. The number of arrivals to Hong Kong increased by 30% since the government introduced the zero plus three policy. Zelichin reports on how the relaxed border restrictions affect the international business community and what it would take to attract more visitors. People arriving in Hong Kong can go straight home or to their hotel. The cancellation of mandatory quarantine after two years of restrictions is a welcome relief. But is that enough for business to return to the pre-pandemic days? And what about opening up the border with China? Good morning. Yeah, that looks very nice. Martin van der Dusen is visiting Hong Kong from the Netherlands for two weeks. It's his first trip back since early 2020. He and his Hong Kong-based colleague are excited to meet with clients in person at the Wan Chai Convention Center. It's great to talk to them. It's great to find out what their experience is with uh, using our product, because uh, normally we only speak to them on the phone or via a computer screen. And to finally meet people, maybe sound strange, see their emotions also in the discussion. Martin has an online platform which manufacturers in China use to make sure their products comply with the rules of the European export markets. He used to come to the Hong Kong trade shows twice a year. He's noticed some drastic changes at this year's exhibition. It's much, much smaller. They have now combined five shows in one floor where there should be five different shows filling the whole building each. Despite the smaller show, he flew to Hong Kong as soon as the mandatory quarantine was cancelled. I bought my ticket in 2019 for the trade shows in April, and then it was closed in April 2020. So the ticket was extended and extended and extended, and then finally the quarantine was uh, terminated and was changed to uh, a short test regime, which, which is fine. I mean, uh, it, that, that's bearable in that sense. The zero plus three scheme means recent arrivals will have no hotel quarantine, three days of no high risk activities such as entering restaurants, and seven days of monitoring one's health with rat and PCR tests. We run our company like a family. That also means you need to see people now and then. And um, we had two staff here, uh, three actually, that we never met. So. Uh, and that was uh, a very important reason to come here. And this was his first visit to the Hong Kong office, which was set up in Shen Shui earlier this year. Before, his Hong Kong staff used to commute to the Shenzhen office every day. But that changed when the pandemic began. Then the commuting had to stop because the border was closed. And that meant that uh, people here had to start working from home. So that was a reason to establish the office. Martin had hoped to visit his Shenzhen employees on this trip. He also hasn't seen them in person in more than two years. There were some indications that uh, by the end of September, uh, China government, uh, government may decide to open up, but that did not happen. It's still quarantine. And for me, uh, I'm traveling here for two weeks. It's not worthwhile to go in quarantine for a week to visit for one day uh, my colleagues in Shenzhen. Upon arriving in the mainland, travelers will have to quarantine for seven days in designated facilities and in an additional three days at home or in centralized facilities. So the Hong Kong-China border is right over there. Why do you need it to reopen? I need to reopen to have our staff on both sides working physically together but also to help manufacturers by coming to Hong Kong trade shows uh, to help them in their exports and advise them. So you guys can meet up with your clients face to face? Face to face is essential in my view in doing business. The property market is the biggest risk. Raymond Young is the Greater China Chief Economist at a bank. He says the Hong Kong mainland border restrictions need to be eased for the SAR to maintain its status as an international financial center. Hong Kong has a lot of the capital, 
uh, market connection, uh, different type of uh, connect, so stock connect, bond connect. But at the same time, the people's flows is very important. For example, can we allow the business traveler or the senior management in the mainland can come to Hong Kong and do the roadshow, uh, to come for the IPO. And these are very important to solidify the position as the offshore RMB center. In the first eight months of the year, Hong Kong had less than 185,000 visitors because of the border restrictions. That's a lot fewer than the 56 million visitors in 2019 before the pandemic. And altogether, they spent $256 billion in the city. This hotelier hasn't had much tourist business since the introduction of the zero plus three policy at the end of September. We are not really seeing the return of tourists or business travelers. I think as long as this plus three is there, you know, the testing is there, I think we'll still be a deterrent. You know, at the end of the day, a tourist comes into Hong Kong, they want to go out, eat at restaurants, you know, go to the nice bars. Of course, our local residents will continue coming back in, or families, you know, who have not met their family members for years. Back in 2020, when the government restricted the borders because of the COVID-19 pandemic, Girish Jinjinwala transformed two of his properties into quarantine hotels, booking rooms to recent arrivals to Hong Kong. The occupancy rate was 80%. So this was a very popular suite during quarantine, just because of the space. It's a top floor, it's got a fantastic view. It's got a study desk and everything. This is the bedroom. Did you quarantine in this room? No, I didn't get a chance to. It was all as well. <laughs> of course, you know, after so many people have stayed, it still needs a bit of touch up. Uh, just fixing up, like, you know, nicks of pain. After two years of running quarantine hotels, Girish plans to refurbish the buildings. You know, earlier we had smaller rooms, um, more for business travelers who just needed a bed to sleep on. Now I think we are rejigging ourselves, making them larger rooms, breaking down some of the walls between two rooms. He hopes to have the hotels renovated by early next year to welcome visitors coming for conventions in the spring. Raymond estimates that Hong Kong's 2022 full-year GDP will contract by 0.7% year-on-year because of the border controls and external factors. Part of the uh, problem is because of a potential global recession and also the slowdown of the Chinese economy and also the very weak uh, property market locally. That's all contribute to a poor performance of the Hong Kong economy. But uh, some of the economic impact is uh, whether Hong Kong uh, can still be a place for, to do business and attract people to come here. Inyake Amate is the chair of the European Chamber of Commerce. He says it will take years for business in Hong Kong to return to the pre-pandemic days. We have seen a, one of the biggest exodus that we can remember among the international business community. Some of the organizations that left, it will probably not change their mind. When you decide to move headquarters, you don't change your mind after a year, after two years. You probably have made a decision that requires investment, that is part of a strategy, and therefore you don't back up. He thinks that it would take a lot more than the Hong Kong government cancelling all border and COVID-19 restrictions to attract people to come back. The reality is that um, in many countries outside Hong Kong, at the moment the reputation of Hong Kong as an international business centre is very low. We, there is a lot of work that needs to be done to regain the trust of organisations. We need to convince organizations, convince people that Hong Kong is safe again, that it's a good place, that it's open to the, to the rest of the world for you know, coming and visiting, doing business, coming as a tourist. Girish, a Hong Kong native, says the city's bounced back from crises before, and he is optimistic about the SAR's future. Well, we had six weeks or seven weeks of SARS, and one month later, things are booming here again, right? So I think, I think we'll go through it. I mean, during the financial crisis as well, things were, you know, um, you know, difficult for a short time, and we came right back up. So I think Hong Kong has, has that knack for reinventing itself again and again, and I hope we do it again. Up next, how landlords are reacting to the slide in demand. Stay with us.
welcome back to Money Matters. The leasing market in the luxury sector has been under pressure as expats have left Hong Kong. As the rental market continues to weaken, landlords are offering more discounts to attract tenants. And this has led to tenants becoming more choosy about signing a lease. Alice Khan reports on what is regarded as a reasonably priced high-end apartment in southern Hong Kong Island. Waterfall Bay at sunset. Last time we were in Cyberport, we visited a large townhouse in the luxury project of Bel Air. We've come back to explore the apartments. Government data have shown the rental sector in the high end of the market has been under pressure. Rents have fallen 9.6% from the peak in August 2019. The flats in Bel Air have resisted the general trend but still have slipped by around 5%. So we took a look at a nearly 1,300 square foot flat on the 20th floor. The previous occupant was an expat. The landlord is asking $65,000 a month, inclusive of management fee and government rates. It also comes with a car park. The living and dining area is 310 square feet. Where's the dining area? I, should, I would suggest um, to use this area as dining area, because uh, you can put the dining table here, and uh, this is a very close to the kitchen. And then you can put the dining table um, to fit for eight to ten people easily in this area. Then can we put a cabinet over there? Um, yes, you could. Um, you could um, put a uh, big, uh, huge cabinet uh, with the wide fridge. Laying out the furniture in this flat will be easy given its size. Can we put a large furniture? Uh, definitely. Seems that uh, the width of this living room is 13 feet, so we could put a very large piece of furniture um, in this uh, living room area. Then what do we put here? Uh, you could put a bush, um, a, a really large bookshelf here. Then uh, after that, you could put the um, L-shaped sofa, up to eight to ten people easily to enjoy the sea view outside. Then how about this wall? Can we, how do we decorate this wall? I would suggest to big, uh, you could uh, put a big cabinet um, against the wall and uh, having some painting. The landlord upgraded the interior and appliances. Jackie, what's up there? Oh, okay, uh, that's the speaker outlet. So uh, it's already been installed by the landlord. There are tenants who could set up a home cinema stereo system. Floor to ceiling window brings light straight into the living room. A sliding door leads to the balcony. Well, the door is very wide. Yes, uh, it extends the living room area. It's about 60 square foot. But it's not really that practical because the shape is pretty irregular. Um, yes, you can use this uh, bigger part uh, to put um, a um, like a small table with chairs to enjoy the view outside. And also you can put um, some plants at the, the small, uh, small parts of the balcony. The balcony looks out to a wide sea view. It's the Lantau Island over there. And then you can see the boat traveling on the sea. Then which, which direction is this flat facing? It's facing west. Well, the sun is so strong, particularly in the afternoon. Ah, uh, yes, that's why the landlord they uh, who installed that uh, brighting here to brought the sunshine uh, if necessary. And also, um, this uh, window, ha this glass has special has special features, which can brought the heat. How many bedrooms in this unit? It has a three bedrooms. This is the first bedroom. Well, this is very nice that the wooden frame is very Chinese. Yes, uh, the landlord knows the, uh, the Western expats and like the Chinese uh, culture element. And uh, this is the folding uh, panel. Well, this is an open plan bedroom. It is, it creates more spacious. And also it's uh, connected to the living room and dining room area. So when you have a party, so the guest has more room to walk around the apartment. 
The expandable room is 80 square feet and could easily double as a family or guest room. You just simply um, open the sofa bed. Next is the master bedroom with ensuite. Do you think this is a feature wall? Yes, it's nicely done. No, it's not. It's, uh, it's a nice and big wardrobe. So uh, all this part is the wardrobe. Wow. This is for gentlemen? Yes, it want. Is any part for ladies? Yes, this part you could use for ladies. It has that um, place for, for store long clothing. The bedroom is 140 square feet with a sea view. The curvy glass curtain wall is a special design. How do you lay out the bed then? Um, the, I think the only way is that you put the um, bed here. You could put the king size bed uh, on this way. It should be big enough to leave a room to walk around the bed. Then, but this side is um, it's curvy. It's very hard to put any furniture here. I uh, agree, but uh, you could um, go to the tailor made the, um, the curved bedside table to put in at this corner. A dressing table can fit on the other side of the space. The ensuite bathroom is 50 square feet. You know what are we sitting on now? It's a bathtub. Uh, no, it's not a regular bathtub. It's a jacuzzi. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it has a telephone as well. Um, yes, uh, back in the 2003 when the developer building this uh, building, who also already offered the luxury features for this apartment. But the wire is too old. Um, you can offer the landlord to replace it. The third bedroom is only 87 square feet. Can we put a um, king size or queen size bed? Uh, in that case, I would say you need to put the bed all against the wall, then you leave it only one side to jump out and in the bed. If you, you can put a double bed, you still have room to put a um, bedside table on both sides. Is there any room for a wardrobe? Um, I would say it will be probably a bit small. The landlord offers a small built-in wardrobe outside the bedroom. Jackie led us to the kitchen. Alice, um, a lot of space has gone to the back of the unit, so um, this is the kitchen. The kitchen is 70 square feet. Well, it's almost like a bedroom. Correct, and uh, I'll show you more space at the back. This way, please. What's this area for? This is laundry area. Um, so it, uh, it takes up uh, almost uh, 30 square foot. This is uh, more spaces here. This uh, definitely um, office, you can see this of the main quarter. About 40 square foot. Then what's behind that? Um, it's the air conditioner uh, compressor room. So we store all the air cube, uh, all the compressor and the uh, washing machine. Mm, it's about 40 square feet, is it correct? Um, yeah, pretty close. It takes some spaces. But uh, on the other hand, it's uh, useful. So um, when the technician repair or maintain the air conditioning, they don't need to uh, install a scouring. So they, the technician just go to this room. The landlord spent half a million dollars to renovate the flat and the kitchen. Actually, ask you a question. So since you have uh, been uh, living overseas for years, so what do you want uh, inside the kitchen? Mm. I think priority is oven. Oven, bingo. So um, this is the oven. What else? Grill. Now, here you go. It's a nice grill here. There's a dishwasher too. The landlord is asking $65,000. Then is it reasonable? I would say it's, uh, it's a bargain because the uh, uh, same size the unit in the other tower is asking for 68000 This apartment has a very nice panoramic sea view plus the some like garden view as well. And also second is the um, interior condition. So the landlord to um, spend money to uh, upgrade the uh, interior. The economy is not great. So would people willing to pay 65,000 rent? Uh, well, the, the, the landlord um, still has a mortgage uh, for this apartment. Uh, so who want to rent it out uh, ASAP? to get the mortgage income to cover the mortgage payment. 
We asked surveyor Kit Jung for his opinion. The rental range for uh, the residential unit in Bel Air, which is in the range of 45 to 55 honky per square foot per month. And uh, the current asking unit rents of around 50 honky per square foot per month. It is within the range. And given that this unit is subject to a seaville with quite a high floor level, I consider that the unit rent is quite reasonable. He says the layout is a downside. If a residential unit, which is subject to a sellable area of around 1,300 uh, square feet, uh, a lot of occupier they will uh, expect a larger uh, bedroom size. Kit says the leasing market in the luxury sector is still under pressure because of weak demand. He thinks the landlord should consider lowering the rent. Hong Kong is not uh, totally resumed to normal. Although uh, recently the government announced the policy of zero plus three, it will not strongly initiate the expect to return to Hong Kong immediately because of the reason that a lot of expats choose Hong Kong as a station uh, because convenience of getting to mainland China. Tintin's rocket is instantly recognizable from his adventure Explorers on the Moon. The fictional intrepid journalist, the creation of legendary comic artist Hergé, is now more than 90 years old, but he retains his boyish charm as his adventures endure in the 21st century. The show called Hergé, the Exhibition, arrived in Madrid with Tintin, his loyal dog Snowy, Captain Haddock, and the detectives Thompson and Thompson. Visitors can learn about the Belgian cartoonist's creative process, his work in the studio, and how world events shaped his storytelling. He was very influenced by what was going on in the world. So Tibet was created and Lotus Bleu was created because there were events in those countries and the, the Japanese were invading China. Hergé, whose real name was Georges Rémy, was born in Belgium. Movies were his first inspiration to create works in black and white, just as he saw them on the big screen. The Belgian is considered the father of European comics and a huge figure in the comic book world, both culturally and economically. His Tintin creation has been translated into a hundred languages and has sold more than 250 million copies worldwide. The drawings of the Tintin series have been admired for their clean, realistic, and expressive images, drawing on themes of politics, history, culture, and technology. Visitors to the Madrid show will discover original Tintin drawings, sketches, newspaper cartoons, original paintings, photographs, and archive documents, some on display for the very first time. That's the show. Thanks for watching. Next time on Money Matters, stock pickers try to find some winners in a bear market. See you then. Good night.